Ma! 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 Hello everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to my channel, it's very nice to have you here. My name is Courtney J and today we are reacting to Fellow Travellers episode 2. Now the last episode um, was a huge amount of information in a small package, like we got decades worth of information, uh, we've got the characters just entwining and seeing all the pain and the suffering of the times with being gay, um, which is just, it's very hard to see, it's very hard to imagine that world and it wasn't that long ago, it's only like 70 years ago people had this and then you know you go back only 50 years ago or 40 years ago to the 80s and you have the AIDS epidemic and what people were saying about gay people, that it was the gay disease, and it wasn't. It was spreading out through everybody. Um, so that's what I realised while I was editing when they were saying about the illness that Tim has. It's going to be HIV, it's going to be AIDS, he's going to be a victim of the reality of what it was like back then, and it's spreading through, and it killed so many people, and it's, it's a really sad thing to happen. So seeing like the reality of that, and the realities of their relationship being a secret and how much like trouble there was around. It's just going to be interesting seeing like Hawk's character develop as well because he seemed to be opening up emotionally in the last episode um, towards the end of the episode where at the beginning we've seen him being quite cutthroat. Like him being with men is like something he needs but he doesn't see it as like a, a relationship. It's very one-sided. He gets what he needs and then the person he's with disappears, like he won't talk to them again, and when someone actually did almost cause trouble with him, he got him caught, and that's that's really scary to live in a world where people could just do that, people could just make an allegation, that's it, you're in trouble, like, they won't go, oh, maybe they're gay, they will go, they are gay, <laughs> that's how they will see it. it, it was more like guilty until proven innocent, instead of being innocent until proven guilty, so... Yeah, it's a very dramatic series. I'm looking forward to what episode two is going to um, show us and how Tim and Hawk's characters are going to see their story unfold over, I'm guessing, years because, you know, it's set in the 50s, it's set in the 80s. There's a big time gap between that. So I want to see how it goes. Anyway, enough of me talking. Uh, I'm just going to give a massive shout out to the patrons. You guys are amazing. I hope you're enjoying the content. I hope you're enjoying all this unedited on there. There's going to be some exclusive series over the Christmas period. I'm going to do Interview with a Vampire, which I've watched the first episode. I'm going to re-watch it and then watch the rest of the series. It was brilliant. It's gay. It's vampires. It's gory. It's sexy. And pretty much for all those reasons, the reason it can't be shown on YouTube. So I'm going to do it exclusively on Patreon. I'm also going to do um, the queer film with uh, Timothy Chamelay. That's going to be on there. Um, very soon because I want to watch that movie and I'm sure you guys want to watch it as well and movies will always get put on the Patreon first because they take so long to edit for things like YouTube so uh, yeah you guys can enjoy that exclusive content and you can get all these videos unedited on there as well but let's get into episode two of Fellow Travellers. So it's cool that we, we're getting an intro in this um, seeing lots of pictures of like you know gay couples and all that I'm guessing some of those were the, maybe some of the characters as well, um, some of the singular people, if they were real people, I don't know if they're, any of them are they some real people, if not, I'm wrong on that one, but like, I hope these are, this is like real footage and real pictures of people from the past and they haven't just like created that, that imagery, because then it's more real, you know, these people really did exist, this, these times really did exist, and it's a reality of like, how much we've changed in 70 years, but how much work is still to be done, because there's still people who are homophobic, but there's still countries that don't allow people to be themselves. So we have so much more to fight for. And shows like this highlight the reality of what people go through. Like sometimes the difference between watching an episode of this can be the difference between someone being like, I'm homophobic to I never thought of the situation like that. And I know like Heartstopper did that for a lot of people. I know that Red, White, Royal Blue would do that for some people. And as we see more stories like this, people will change. So, um, you know, it's important that these shows get made. And the more they get made, the more I'll react to them and the more people will get the truth about what it is to be queer. Thank you for coming. You're, um... Maggie. Maggie. Tim sister. Yeah. When you called earlier, I, I was surprised. That it was me? Yeah. I don't see it. Although he swears no one else even came close. Is he up for a visit? He stole that from him. His ever being able to have a real partner he told Marcus he didn't want to see you. This isn't between me and Marcus. Well, I don't want you anywhere near my brother. 
No offense. It's not between me and you either. I mean, it's Tim's choice. That's definitely not Tim. I think you'll be relieved to not have to see him. Why would I fly 3,000 miles if I didn't want to see him? I don't know. So you can say that you tried? He must have done something real bad to Tim. Not a camera in the world that your boss wouldn't put himself in front of. Oh, I'm gonna need a stiff drink. You ready? Senator McCarthy. Miss Curd, this is my friend, Mary Johnson. How do you do? You can pick him, Tim. Lovely. <laughs> Ah, uh, that casual, just like, it's not even misogyny, but it kind of is. It's just, just like, oh, it's a woman. Yes, sir, Mr. Cohn. Not a person. Is this your date? Mary Johnson. She works in state. Money. Want you to meet some people. It takes a confident uh, man to bring his own mother as his date. Thanks for being mine. It's my pleasure. For better reason. Whoa! <laughs> Jesus Christ, this show you, man. <laughs> that bob has a nice bob, though. Mary's a good sport. She even smiled when she shook the senator's hand. I think she might be growing fond of me. She doesn't want to f you, Skippy. That's what you're worried about. She likes women. Ah. Membership's free, but dudes will kill you. Why didn't she tell me? We're friends. Loose lips sink ships. Uh, that's the thing, naivety. You both need cover. What about you? I have a bronze star. In case you had lost some bulletproof. Uh, that, that's not the perfect cover, isn't it? You, you're both queer. You both cover each other. You hold that fake relationship while pursuing what you like. I'll keep plugging away for another five years or so. Until I get posted overseas. If your eyes on you over there. When they call me back, I'll quit. Buy a villa, someplace in the water with a nice view, where I can eat what I want and fuck who I want without anyone giving a damn. It sounded like it didn't involve secret, by the way. Tim and the plan, though. I'll take it to me. But it's sad that that's the reality is I like, even that's a reality today that people, you'd have to move country for you to be safer. You know, I know this because I've had messages from a bunch of people who come from different countries where religion, you know, and just general culture does not accept it. And the only thing I can advise is that you have to leave there because you can never be yourself. And all that. It's a hard decision, but sometimes you have to make that decision for yourself. So, it's sad to see that we haven't, we've changed a lot, but we haven't fully changed. Skippy, Skippy, wake up. Hey, hey, we fell asleep. You need to get going. Oh shit, yeah. You couldn't be seen leaving a man's apartment in the morning like that. Especially in these times, because the insinuations would be that you're sleeping together. And because I suppose like crashing at someone's place wouldn't be a big thing. I'm gonna look outside and make sure it's clear. The stairs. Oh shit. So a smart thing to do would be like make it like a business call. Yeah. Be like, ah, oh, Mr. Hawk, uh, I need to talk to you about this. He knows how to think on his feet though. I'll give him that. Yes, our country is under threat from Soviet spies and those who support them. But there's another risk to national security. The sheer volume of deviance in our midst. The M unit has dismissed or forced the resignation of twice as many federal employees for homosexuality as our counterparts have for communist leanings. Quite simply, we are overrun. Now, as you may know, we've begun issuing <coughs> summons to those mental. reported or suspected. The State Department has been one of the most trusted institutions in the post-war world. With your help, we'll get it back there. That's horrendous, isn't it? The fact that they, they, they think that, you know, people's trying to start a war versus people just being with the same gender is the same thing. When's your next date with him? Uh, I feel like his secretary is going to be the one what kind of dobs him in. Hello, darling. I was wondering, since you're in town, if I could buy you lunch. I guess you got to keep at the facade somehow, haven't you? Speaking of, how was Uncle Howard? Insolvent. The IRS finally caught up with him. If you were counting on that windfall, you're out of luck. Is that why you asked me to lunch? Man has a right to see his own mother, doesn't he? Sounds like you're looking for a quick getaway. You do have another resource available to you. <clears throat> nope. Your father is dying, Hawk. I think it's real this time. 
And he's had a change of heart. Doesn't seem likely in the absence of one. He's open to putting <laughs> it back in the will. You get your rightful share. I want that for you. He's open. On what condition? Promise of an heir to carry on the family name, that sort of thing. More than anything, he'd like an apology. For what? It's a significant inheritance. And it's yours for a simple apology. Even one that's insincere. I mean, yeah, you do. You hide enough, like, you could fake that as well. I'm putting all my husband trapping skills to good use. My parents would be so proud. Does it bother you that they wouldn't be? Proud of who you really are. Try not to think about it. Living a thousand miles away helps. Given your fondness for McCarthy, I assume that yours are quite devout. Got milk? Are you? For most of my life, I thought I was going to be a priest. That went out the window with, well, you know, I think Hawk's angry with me. Quite you, time to go from politics, well, to go from priesthood to politics, isn't it? So all this pretending, I sh you'd think I'd be good at it. I've been doing it my whole life. Hiding a part of yourself and killing it are two different things. Maybe it is better to kill it and be finished with it. It's better than constantly yearning for something you can't have. Will you come to my house tonight? I'm having some friends over. I'm hoping, you know, he'll call. I'm gonna write down her address. The thing is, he's gotta keep up that facade as well. The more he's around a woman, less people suspect him. The more he's around men, the more likely people are to suspect him. I guess I'm in the right place. Come on in. They're all in here. Everybody is Tim. Tim, this is Caroline, Gloria, Luis, uh, and everybody. Hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. We came together, but uh, no, we're not a couple. They're all going to be queer, aren't they? You live together. Why shouldn't we? The neighbors just think that we're roommates on a budget. Uh, though, I'd rather you didn't mention it to Hawkins. Because he wouldn't approve. Because we're all allowed our secrets. I like that. I think it's cute as well back in like, yeah, 50s, 80s, whatever. Like, modern technology has killed a lot of like this. You know, playing charades, having just like fun. Not needing to lean on a phone all the time to like every 10 minutes long TikTok or YouTube, whatever. People like actually interacted and you know, we're emotionally connected. That's just a massive disconnect nowadays. It's nice to see him like, being comfortable as well. That makes me really happy. I guess back in those times like, would be mutually exclusive being a, a thing in the like quick community. Obviously you'd probably have your connections, but like it'd be dangerous to be, it'd be just as dangerous to be with somebody singularly than multiple men, if that makes sense. Like obviously because of the dangers of like STIs and all that, but like, you know. Mean girls are great hostesses. Mary Sue, you're Catholic? I am, or was. I'm not sure where I'd land now. Lapsed, I guess. Do you, uh, do you miss it? I miss God. You? I have God. Oh, I, I thought you... I am. Then how do you manage... I'm celibate. I made that choice a while back. You have to decide what matters most to you. That's an incredible choice to make. Good night. Like, to choose your faith like that is uh, quite a... Uh, quite a hard choice to live your whole life. You know, never to like have that intimacy. And not because you, you don't want it, because you put your belief in a higher faith. That's insane. You're pretty when you smile. Fuck you. I guess we could go another round. We'd have the same old argument. I don't bottom. <laughs> Lost the subcommittee beat. Took a shot at Sean and Cole. That was stupid. Yeah. All these goddamn white men. Should I be taking this personally? Maybe. <laughs> There's no escaping you people. Not even in here. Although something what I question is, he's dressed up as a woman. How do they hide that real quick? At least Cohen only likes some big, dumb, and white. You know, they're set up to like run. So, I'm sure the little cocksucker's working on it. What do you know about him? Silver Spoon who wants to be a hero. It's hard to do when you're 4F. Looks fit to me. Yeah. Might look into that. He's out of New York, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, another Glenn Moore on the rocks. What about you? You need something, baby? Sure, I'll have Rico. 
Yeah, it's just because <clears throat> they're so like it's important that they can cover up all of this real quick as if like someone was to storm the room. Tim is a good guy. I know. With Tim getting too close. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. This is. You know what the difference is between you and me? Sometime, somewhere, I like more than this. That's the thing, his disconnect keeps him safe and he'll choose security over, you know, his desire at any time. Massive house. Hawkins, I'm so glad you came. Here he is. Hello, Hawk. I'm afraid your father's asleep. You know, it was a long drive. I wouldn't mind resting my head for a bit, if that's all right. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night. But you're off to Senate Beach. News does travel fast. I am. I have other visits here. Have you been in touch with Hawk? I'll answer your question if you answer one of mine. You see David shot in the flesh on a regular basis. So? Does he live? show any injury that look like a 4F to you? He works for my employer, whom I happen to admire. Saw so Hawk the other night. Everyone always wants something, don't they? There's no injury that I've ever noticed. Play squash three times a week. Last time I saw Hawk, he was at the cozy corner looking for trouble, which is what you'll get if you don't let him go. So it seems really to get lost in love where Hawk isn't. Hello? Yes, that's fine. Is everything all right? Fine. Has that friend been caught or something? Who reported you? I, I don't know. It, it might have been him. I didn't want to tell you because I knew you'd get mad. This fellow in my office, he kept asking me out and I kept saying no. And, and so men, they don't like hearing that. Exactly what I thought would happen when it comes to these situations, that people would manipulate it and they'd just accuse people to, if someone's a higher power, they'll accuse them just so they can get into trouble, so they can claim their spot. If they, like men don't get their advances accepted, of course a woman has to be a lesbian. She couldn't just be, you know, a person who's not attracted to you. Even though in this case she is a lesbian, it still doesn't matter. You can't, you, like, people are just fucking disgusting with their actions sometimes. And men and their egos are the most, like, fragile things. Oh, that's the uh, tennis player guy, isn't it? I knew it would bring you back, me dying. Actually, I've been wanting to come home for some time. Are you in much pain? You were good at a lot, son, but you were never good at concealing yourself. Has it changed? Have you? I'd say so. Then you'll be getting married and having children. That would be the expectation. So does his dad know that he's gay? Is that what? Is your apology. And I'm to apologize for what? Precisely. I just, I'd like to get this right. For having no shame. For making me endure rumors about my homosexual son. Yeah. For me walking in and having to see you on your knees to that boy, Kenny. I'm sorry that you're dying, that not a single fucking soul gives a shit, and that you didn't knock first. That's cold. You're not getting my money. I mean, I fully respect that. Be true to who you are, because that money would be his ticket out. I'm sorry, Mother. An apology? You see how easy that was? I should have convinced you to leave him. You couldn't have. I was a grown woman. I knew what I was doing. This is what I wanted. The marriage was the way for me to have it. I mean, I have one of those. I dare not smoke in front of your father, but with his condition. So that's why you stayed? That and the same reason that you never do. It's easier. There is someone now. I'm glad. I mean, at least he's like admitted that he actually has real feelings. I guess that was like him killing that final part of him, like he's gonna choose to be happy. I just whacked my microphone as well. Lock's still broken downstairs. Where have you been? Doesn't matter. I'm home now. Aw, that's very sweet. So you sleep on the sofa then? Yes, sir. Since Mary has the bedroom, I pay less for rent. It's a full mattress, sagging on both sides. My mother and father gave me their old bed when I moved here. Blue sleepwear appears mannish. Whose is it? Mine. There's not much in the way of cosmetics. One thing I've noticed is that there are very few items of a personal nature here. No photographs, no scrapbooks. We don't have time for that sort of thing. We're both dedicated to our work. 
So they're saying how they'd like define what would make them gay is the fact that they wouldn't wear makeup or... And so you're aware, Miss Stewart, we may have questions for your family and your co-workers too. Or the clothes that she wears, rather than like, oh, there's allegations of you guys being together. It's, it's just a very strange, like, it's like very surface level stuff to prove that they're guilty. No, 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 no. They're, they're right out there. The door's locked. See, that was very naive to do that as well. When you think about it, like, you are literally under investigation. You have to, like, keep your feelings nullified. If anything, have a man turn up to take you out on a date or something. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta curb those, yeah, you gotta curb those, those feelings you have. Caroline, she works at the State Department. They live together. They really love each other, Hawk. You should see the way that they- Get to the point. She's being investigated. Some fella she works with reported her out of malice. It doesn't matter how she got their attention. She did. She's screwed. We both screwed. You sound angry at them. What they did was dangerous. You understand that? How do you know they live together? They asked me over when you were avoiding me. I met their friends. Can you help them? Ask your boss or Senator Smith? Here, sit down. In helping them, he becomes culpable to him being investigated because why would you help somebody? Dear Mary, just write. You have to. I fell for you the first moment I laid eyes on you. Right away, I was taken by your beauty, but I was won over by your mind. To feel your body against mine brought me more happiness than you could ever know. Yeah, so they set it up like, like he's with her. But I've always known we have no real future together. I can't do this. You broke the rules, Skippy. You went there, you palled around with a bunch of queers. You're practically on record. Do you realize that? And I'm just now hearing about it. You keep writing. Oh, they're doing, it's going to set them up even further. You're not being Catholic is a problem for me and for my family. I don't mean to hurt you, but I think it's better for both of us to part ways. With affection, Tim, slip that under Mary's door and refuse contact with either one. They are my friends. They are liabilities. He's cut throat. Like, the problem is that having emotion and, na and the naivety to act on those emotions is what will get you caught. And as much as you can say like, oh wow. It's any consolation, it throws the heat off you both. Mary can use the letter to clear herself. Pin it all on Caroline. Yeah. She loves her. She would never do that. Watch her. It's, it's, it's brutal, but it's the reality of it, isn't it? Like, they've got to protect themselves. And in fact, if they get to lapse or, like, slip up, that means they're going to prison. I don't understand you. I don't understand us. It's because he's a realist. Come on, you don't have to go. As long as we're careful. You mean, you want me to what? Stay for an hour for sex? Senator Smith is on McCarthy's enemy list. They're gonna try and find something on him. And that is the last dirty thing I'm ever gonna do for you. I see it from both sides. Like, it's, it's, it's an awful situation to be in where like, you know, just talking to another guy could get you locked up in prison. So having feelings is just, it's almost a death sentence. Sweetheart, I'm sorry I missed you. Listen, I'm on standby for a flight that leaves tomorrow morning. Gets me into Dallas in the afternoon. I love you. Wow. Oh, is this in present day? So it's just, just a gay biker bar. It's so hard to tell sometimes if they're jumping to the future because I know they're meant to make you look older, but he just doesn't look that much older. Hey dad, looking good. When was the last time you made a really big mistake? Whatever happened to come here often? What? Never mind. I'm on a date, but I could be free later. I'm curious about something. With everything that's going on, aren't you even a little concerned? I take care of myself. I work out. I'm young, dumb, and full of calm. But that's not what keeps you protected. You're bulletproof. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. You know what it's taken me a long time to realize? Not everybody else is. Take care of yourself. That's the scary thing, like, just thinking that, like, you exercise protects you from STIs is not... I guess the education just isn't there at that time. You know, like, like what we have now. But people still get STIs now and they still do, you know, they don't protect themselves like they should. It's just, I guess, people's, like, desire and the, is it the id factor? Like, what you want and you crave and all that. You always see past, like, precautionary stuff which you, sh you know you should do. Oh, you coming in? Yeah. Doors open, Maggie. Did you forget your keys? Well, we both know my eyesight is terrible. And maybe the dementia is setting in, but I think 
Hawkins Fuller is standing in my apartment. Hi, Skippy. Don't be afraid. It's not airborne. It's not what I'm afraid of. Yeah, it's you. Oh. Is he staying for dinner? If he wants to. That'd uh, be tragic to see the person that you, you love basically dying in front of your eyes. Tim kept trying to warn me. When we were intimate, he said he thought there was something off about her. And we even thought about it a few times, but I didn't listen. And then after your visit, I confronted her about it and she admitted it was true. But you had no idea prior? None. Of course, I asked her to move out right away. She went back to her parents' home in Ohio. Thank you, Miss Johnson. It's been very helpful. That's, that's horrendous. They like just throwing the person that you live under the bus to protect yourself. But I, I, you can't be too judgy about it because... Might I speak with you off the record? Because of the aspects of what, if you were in that situation, would you do the same? Not Cohen. Everyone knows that. What's your point? I imagine it must be difficult to stand by and watch as Cohen allows his friend, David Scheid, to pontificate about fighting communists while Scheid himself is actively avoiding the draft. Go on. Mr. Scheid, who resides in New York, somehow managed a 4F classification in California, where his family owns the Ambassador Hotel and has a few local politicians in their back pocket. I've done the research. It's all in here. Why are you giving this to me? Because my paper doesn't have the power to tackle this. You're on McCarthy's enemies list, sir. They're looking for something on you. Well, let them look. I got nothing to hide. We all have something to hide. They can't hurt you, they'll go after someone close to you. And if they can't find something, they'll invent it. So what are you suggesting? McCarthy's not invincible. He's got three weak spots. Booze, Cone's ego, and the utter uselessness of David Shine. That combo could be their downfall. I just need to find some ammo to speed it along. I remember the summer that Leonard first brought you by. You wanted to practice on a tennis court. You were uh, 15. 16. I hope I haven't worn out my welcome. Not at all. But someone asked me why one of the most eligible bachelors in town hasn't married yet. Well, I couldn't think of an answer. So he marries her, checks his ass, gets an heir, probably gets his money from his dad because he's got an heir. You all right? I'm thinking how horrible it must have been for Ethel, knowing she was leaving her boys behind alone. Makes me think twice about bringing children into a world like this. You'll make a wonderful mother. I mean, I can't work out the timeline, but like, his daughter's got kids who are like, I don't know, like five, six. Him and her get together. It's gonna happen in the next maybe five years. Nice story. You read my paper? Drag queens can read. It's a beautiful article. What's your favorite Langston Hughes story? Poem. This is for the kids who die, black and white. For kids will die certainly. The old and rich will live on a while as always eating blood and gold, letting kids die. A very interesting man. Interesting is a liability these days. Yeah, tell me about it. I have been interesting since the age of four when I put on my sister's pink silk slip. That didn't go down well in Tennessee. Do you know any more of that poem? The whole thing by heart. I'd love to like interview someone who was around in this time and just Listen, kids who die. See their mind, their brain. Maybe now there'll be no monument for you, except in our hearts. Maybe your bodies will be lost in a swamp, or a prison grave, or the potter's field. But the day will come, you are sure yourself that it is coming, when the marching feet of the masses will raise for you a living monument of love and joy and laughter, and black hands and white hands clasped as one. But I think, like, you know, Anybody be alive in this time, they had to be in the 90s to the 100s, wouldn't they? Because you think it's in the 50s, but most of these guys are in their 20s, maybe in 30s. So these stories, are, they're gone. The only thing what we have left is, is diaries and pictures. And what do you wish to confess? I've had carnal relations with a man. Are you truly sorry for this sin? Yes. So the end. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So that was the end of episode two. And uh, we've gone like full circle from like the happy ending of the first episode to, um, I think a bit of a reality check for a lot of these characters of like the situations and the worlds they live in. Um, obviously Tim kind of looking like he's going 
back to his religion. So I'm guessing in the next episode, him and Hawk are going to have a very up and down. He's going to be pushing Hawk away, where Hawk seems like he's open to being more expressed about his feelings. But obviously, him seeing Tim seeing the nature of Hawk being willing to just be cutthroat, to just cut people out, you know, just throw people under the bus to protect himself. That is a uh, that's probably something which is deterring him because he knows in reality what will probably happen if it became between him and Hawk, Hawk will choose himself. And because we've seen what happens in the future with their separation and stuff and him being with, um, I forgot what her name is, but you know, his wife and has kids, obviously he makes a choice like that, which truly hurts Tim. So it, it just feels like this is like, you know, a meteor heading for Earth, you know, like it's just building up flames and flames and flames and flames and flames and there's still time, but we know that it's going to hit. So, um, yeah, uh, that was, uh, I think this is a brilliant series. It's so well written. The characters are like, you know, you've got Tim who seems sweet, innocent, he's so likeable. And then you've got Hawk who just seems like, to put it short, sometimes he's a bastard. But you understand his motives as well. Like it's not always because he's he's not evil. He just knows the rules of the game, and unfortunately, the game is not in queer people's favour. So, yeah, it's it's a very impressive series. I'm glad that it exists because you know with like things like Heart stuff, we get like a modern take of like what young love can be being queer. Uh, with red, white, and royal blue, it's like a fantasy of like what if royalty could be queer, young royals, same thing. This is the reality. This is showing you, yes, we have these things now. This is beautiful. These characters are great. We can have so many more people coming out. But this is what was really going on. People were turning on each other's backs. People were getting thrown under the bus. People were dying of diseases. It's just, it's so dramatic, and it just, it gives you a huge reality check and. Um, I just think it's an exceptional series so far. I'm really looking forward to the next episode. It's it's just amazing. So if you did like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments below what, what are some, if, if for the older queer people out there, is there anything where you've been through this? Like maybe in the 70s or the 60s or the 80s or whenever you grew up, what was the times like back then? Just to give an insight to the reality of what we've been through and where we are right now. Um, but thank you for watching. I'm going to say love, peace and just peace and I'll see you next time.